Uh, it's December 10th, 2012, town board meeting. Uh, many of our key members are able to make it tonight. Maddie Chase, if I forget the name, from Girl Scout Troop 10078. <coughs> Is that right? It's going to lead us in the pledge. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure uh, Tom and Gina send their regrets. They have other matters. Um, and we have the magic red book. Wasn't, aren't these supposed to be little books? How little? Only if you're a Maoist. Okay. Well, you never know in these days. Um, well, we did the pledge. Everything. Uh, announcements. Thanks to Williams Lumber for donating the lovely holiday wreaths, decorating the town hall. Um, the town tech initiative RFP is now available from the town clerk and details can be found on the town website. Elizabeth, would you like to expand on that at all? I think that says it all. We've got a, an RFP ready to be bid on for our town uh, hall tech initiative. We're looking for vendors to supply us with a central server uh, to look at mailing uh, options, a server probably off-site cloud, um, some purchases, uh, purchasing of new equipment, um, and a split router. Um, get us into the <coughs> current century. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any other announcements from the board? I'm going to get whiplash. Any announcements from the audience? Uh, so just let me uh, just say, with respect to uh, uh, the lawsuits over the comprehensive plan, the uh, second lawsuit to be adjudicated, which was the Aster Associates uh, lawsuit, uh, we received uh, uh, judgment uh, from the trial court, and that has not been appealed. So that is now final. And the statutory uh, limit for appeals is over. Yes. So that's a huge community-wide sigh of relief. Yes, it is. That's Thank you. And uh, we have filed a lawsuit against the state uh, of New York under the Greenway that, that was filed uh, this week. Do you want to uh, ex week. explain what that means, what we're seeking? Can we? Well, we're seeking reimbursement of our expenses on these lawsuits, which is about 247000 From the state, which is under the Greenway legislation? Yes. Um, just the winter solstice celebration is the 21st down at the dock. If, if you're not home huddling in the basement with your loved ones, um, it, it's a good time. So come out for that. We're going to move things around a little bit. The uh, Let's go to F, approve the prior minutes from November 26, 2012. Motion. Third. Is there a second? Yeah, I uh, second it, uh, okay. but I do have one question. Uh, Tom was supposed to speak to the Bank of Millbrook. I just noticed this on page five, item two. I don't know if that's been done, and how do we uh, make sure it's been done? Because every day we wait, we lose money, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, are these on the minutes? Yeah. This is the November 26 minutes we're talking about, page yeah. five under other business item two. John, will you just make a note of that? Yeah, can you ask Tom? And, uh, if he's not available to do it, I'm sure Bruce can do it as deputy supervisor. Thank you, Joe. I always appreciate it. Responsibility goes with the title. <coughs> yeah, that's all that goes with it. <laughs> oh, no, there's more. Okay, any other discussion on the minutes? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody was opposed. 
Uh, what else can we move up? Um, let's go to business. The resolution approving abstract, abstract 12 vouchers V1218 to V1288 for $40,725.19. I'll make a motion. Second. Discussion? I think we had our questions answered uh, by the bookkeeper, or at least I did. Hey, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, okay, unanimous. Um, item number two is the resolution approving the preliminary capital projects abstracts for $8,895.90. Uh, motion? Okay, uh, we have some follow-up work we're going to do with that just to, for, for our edification in the future, how we can use parkland funds. Um, I'll contact the town attorney and um, we'll, we'll work through that, so. I, I have some information to forward you, which I will do. Okay, um, but other than that, uh, any other discussion on this one? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passed. Um, let's see. Resolution setting 2013, no, budget transfers, I'm sorry. Resolution approving budget transfers and amendments. Came in late today. Everybody had a chance to look at it? Is it in the tabs here? Yeah, it's tab four. I did. Our bookkeeper called me and asked me to look at them. Again, I'd rather have them a day or two before. And maybe we could discuss a cutoff time as well for um, or reaffirm our schedule for <clears throat> items for the agenda and especially response from the attorney. Things are coming in, I think, a little late to, to really move on them properly. Yeah, let's, let's take that as new business a little farther down. Okay. Um, okay, so can I have a motion to approve the budget transfers and amendments? Motion. You already seconded it. We're all set. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. That one passed. We're flying right along here. Um, let's see. Resolution approve or setting 2013 fee schedule for the building department. Tab five, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Joe, you want to explain this? Yes, uh, we adopted our budget for 2013 and that contemplated an increase in various fees, uh, including uh, building department, planning department, and zoning department. Uh, since I uh, will not be here uh, uh, for the next meeting, I wanted to present uh, this motion to increase uh, the fees so they could begin uh, January 1st. I've reviewed uh, and worked with uh, the planning board. I've worked with the building uh, department. I've worked with the zoning enforcement officer uh, with respect to uh, these new fees, and we believe they're uh, in line. Uh, fees can always be uh, uh, changed from time to time, but I think we should uh, start off with uh, uh, this increase, these increases, which I think are appropriate, and if we encounter uh, specific issues, we'll deal with it at that time. Okay. Um, Want to come up to the mic? I have the predictable question, Joe. Um, we worked with you last year to try and come to some kind of fiscal equity between people who live in the hamlet, who are for whom everything, every little tiny thing, even things that don't even require permits in the rest of the town, have to go through site plan review and special use permit. Um, reviews and we work to try and rationalize at least for tiny small projects a fee schedule that was more in line with what everybody else in town was paying. Is that reflected in these the, what you presented here? We kept the same provisions that we did last time with respect to multiple fees. Uh, so uh, whatever was in there 
is continued. Uh, however, there are some uh, fee increases for everybody. Everybody across the board. Yes. Can you tell me where the, the keeping it in there the way it was before is in this? In this um... I, I have something to add to this. This is something that we're looking at in our zoning review committee is the, um, inequity, the inequity in some of the mandates with the LWRP and the comp plan, and this is on the list. This is this special board that Tom and I are on along with John Lyons. Uh, it's a discussion group. Mike Trimble and David Baldorf so our head of planning and zoning, and we are going through and making a list of these things, and that's one of the things that has been identified to be addressed. Why it, it may not show it on this fee schedule, it's something that is going to have to come before the town board with uh, to, for us okay, to but last year you passed a resolution that that made for small projects some uh, relief for people in, in Rhinecliff to do small projects that and it wouldn't cost them three thousand five hundred dollars in fees just to put up a fence right well I, I assume so that, that relief that would continue I didn't I couldn't I read it quickly I couldn't find it so I'm just curious these are you. all throughout uh, here my recollection looking at uh, page two, uh, let's see, for uh, page three talks about uh, beyond the first uh, combined application. Um, but I suggest you, okay. you look at okay. this, and if you have any problems, come back. It keeps the same concepts that we agreed on last time with you except there are general increases for everybody oh, well, on under the initial totally understood yeah yeah but, okay thank you <coughs> and elizabeth if there's anything we can provide for input in your discussion group that would be great uh, i'll email you an update ida let me just point out one thing we have uh put in a fee which other towns have for changes to the zoning law so if anybody is asking for a specific change in the zoning law from the town board, we have added a fee for that. Yes. And other towns have. Yeah, was that a fee that would just affect one person? Or? Uh, yep, it's the person who's asking to change the zoning law. To benefit itself. Yep. But Probably that's why they would be or, or an but, if, but if somebody just on general good government principles suggested a change in the zoning law for the benefit of all, would that be a fee? I don't know. The, the applicant has to pay a fee because we're, we, we have to go through a whole process. You know, if somebody feels that there ought to be a zoning change for the general good, they ought to speak to a town board member or maybe the town board but it, member. But it does have to be for general good. Otherwise, it's spot zoning, I oh, believe. And I spot zoning yeah, isn't, isn't, a, isn't allowed. Well, I'm, I'm particularly thinking of the situation where to me, at least, it seems inequitable that we have, you know, such a differential in fees for people in Rhinecliff versus the but rest of the town. I don't think that's town. a zoning so change. That's oh, a, that's, that's do you think that's just a fee schedule? That's a fee schedule. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second. On, we're going to take it on um, all three of the, the fee schedules, the building, the planning, and the zoning. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, those pass. Um, okay, it's a little after seven. Sorry, Vanderburg Cove people. We're here for your like to, a motion to open the public hearing on the 2013 Vanderburg Cove Sewer District budget, please. Motion. Second, please. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Any public comment? I make a motion that we close the public hearing on the 2013. <laughs> One, thank you into the uh, records. Thank you. One comment. You did a good job. Oh, thanks. Those are nice comments. Um, okay, so we're going to. Uh, roll call? No, let's close the. We uh, close I'll the make public. a motion to close. Yeah, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Um, so then we're going to go with the. Um, We'll, we'll skip the rest. We'll get, do that next. Uh, Russ, thanks, guys. Russell Urban Mead from Chase & Companies here to give us a presentation on the landfill. Thank you. 
Uh, he made me slog through the mud last week. Sorry, what tab are we on? Is that tab? Uh, I don't know if we have a tab. Uh, There's, I know no tab. There's no tab. It's a presentation. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't have one. Okay. <coughs> Russell. My name Urban. is Russell Urban Mead. Uh, I'm with the Chase and Companies, hydrogeologist and vice, pres vice president of environmental services. Um, got a couple things. Do I need to talk into the mic? Yes. Thanks, sir. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, thank you for having me. You might want to give Jeff a copy. He's very involved in this. Anybody else? Um, so thank you for uh, making space and time in your agenda this evening. Uh, and thank you for allowing us to um, monitor and report to the Department of Environmental Conservation and Condition of your landfill for the last two years. Um, we, in those two years, um, identified opportunities for financial savings, reducing your monitoring obligations, um, we've also noted over time, uh, as the DEC has noted, that um, some of the parameters that we sample in groundwater, um, they've been very stable, um, which is why you've been allowed to monitor less frequently. It doesn't necessarily mean they've been cleaning up uh, as much as uh, one might hope. Um, which. It, I, I'm saying because it kind of leads us to where we are today. Um, the landfill uh, sits in a low area, um, and uh, I prepared a, a couple little cartoons to show a, a, a storyline. Um, but um, maybe that's maybe the easiest thing for me to do is talk through that. You closed the landfill in 1997. Um, and the DEC was recently contacted to comment on or help you think through what happens now that there's some beaver activity near the landfill. Uh, so I have a couple pictures for you, but let, let's talk through the cartoons. Um, before there was a landfill, this, it was a low area. Um, this isn't necessarily a perfect cartoon. It's just a, a storyline. Uh, certainly the you area. Cartoon. <coughs> I'm sorry, top page. Yep, perfect. The, uh, the, the I, section one there is, um, you know, rain and groundwater moving through a low area. Um, some of it was wetland vegetation. Some of it may not have been. The area where the waste is is completely covered now, and I don't haven't found a history describing what it was like before waste was there. So some mix probably of maybe just enough upland and some of it may be wet. Um, the second section there shows... Um, so, you know the, the idea of adding waste there as a convenient place to you know manage solid waste um, and that waste in some format probably became wet for two reasons one is because rain fell on the open waste or the daily cover waste but not a, not a capped waste uh, and so rain moved down through the waste and if the waste was also in contact with groundwater and again we don't actually know the topography of what was there under the waste um, then groundwater would be moving through the toe of that and the result of that from either of those two pathways is the potential for for um, water quality that in the landfill business we call leachate uh, migrating toward the adjacent uh, vegetated area. Um, the DEC and the state of New York uh, mounted a concerted effort to try to control these kinds of situations and I'm, I'm assuming that there was co-funding uh, involved here, but uh, the way this process usually works is there's an investigation report uh, where studies are done, borings are put in to figure out how much of this is waste sitting above the water table, how much of this waste is sitting in the water table. Um, and if it's above the water table, it makes sense to put a raincoat on the top of the landfill. We cap the landfill because if you can s block the rain from going through and if the bottom of the waste is not in water, 
then you no longer have water that can become impacted and you, and you reduce your impact to the, to the environment. Um, what I'm observing at this site is that the cap is in good condition. We've been keeping an eye on it for the last two years. I mean, it seems sound. There are no obvious tears. There's no erosion. There's no wear. Um, and around the lower perimeter, there's clearly a dug uh, diversion swale. And that's a pretty normal feature at a lot of these landfills. The idea is to lower the water table. If you dig a ditch, this is how farmers drain fields. You dig, dig a ditch, you drop the water table. If you drop the water table below the base of the waste, you now have that waste isolated, high and dry, with a raincoat on top, and no water moving through the bottom of the waste. And the and, and it was fairly common practice and can work reasonably well. Um, the puzzle that is, I think, giving the DEC concern at this point is the beaver dam, which, uh, yes, I did. It dragged us off through the mud and we went and it found at least one, um, has raised the water level again. Um, and that opens the possibility that the raised water level is now back flooding the toe of the garbage under the cap, <coughs> which is why Steve Parisio from the DEC, who was one of the two DEC individuals there, um, is concerned about the environment and the waste. Um, and he's actually a geologist and a scientist, as am I, um, and we have a very, very sound professional relationship um, over many years. He's asking a question that is easy to ask expensive to answer and even more expensive to resolve if depending on the answer um, he's saying that as best as he can tell from looking through the historic record and as I've had a chance to look at through some of it when the closure investigation report was done borings were done around the perimeter of the waste and nobody ever put a boring right through the waste to find out if there are pockets of lowland that had had waste placed on them that are places that are now garbage sitting in water with or without the activity of the beavers raising and lowering the local water table. And there are various problems with the request that he has placed before you. Um, it's challenging to put a boring through a capped landfill. You have the membrane that you paid for to, to go through and then patch, uh, which it requires uh, certain kinds of experts to do that. Um, it's very compact waste now. When you drill through it, you run the risk of not exactly finding the bottom because uh, the, as the boring progresses, it may just push a little bit of garbage ahead of it and then you'll misidentify it by six inches or a foot. That's easy to do. Um, so test pits are in fact the best way to understand where the base of the garbage is because you see a, a wider face, you see a bigger hole. But a test pit would be a much bigger incursion into the landfill. So for various reasons, it's, it's not an easy investigation to do the some uncertainties are involved and it's a fairly large landfill there there might there might be five or six places where there's a depression in the pre waste topography that is currently in the water with or without managing the water level in the wetland um, so one point wouldn't necessarily answer the question anyway um, so for various reasons that it, it's a sensible question but it's a complicated question and the difficulty is also that if one finds areas where the waste is a, in contact with the water table, uh, if it can't be easily addressed because it was a, an omission from the very beginning, um, then it, it leads to an uncomfortable place in terms of a, a, of a cost obligation. So I just wanted to present this scenario to you so you kind of understand how the beaver dam raises in water this raises and lowers water level in proximity to a landfill that already has some uncertainty about what, where the water level was, even with the drainage, to keep the bottom of the waste dry. And the puzzle is that you have 15 years worth of data that haven't necessarily got as clean as you would expect them to get if the waste is really above the water table and the cap is doing its job. You'd expect the water to be cleaner than it is. So this is why he's asking the additional question, saying, you know, maybe we ought to back the whole tape up 15 years and we ought to find out what the topography is of that landscape underneath the waste. And what, 
When was the landfill started? It, it was capped 15 years ago, right? Yeah, and somebody with longer knowledge than I would have it to say. It started in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Usually they 20 to 30 years Bruce? worth of garbage. I heard 50s. 50s. Yeah, I would have guessed 20 to 30 years. And the practice back then was to maybe put landfills in wet areas or... Unwanted areas. Right, right. And so, you know, we, we don't... We, we, there's no membrane between the waste and the ground. No. It's an But there is a landfill. membrane between the waste and the... And the sky. sky. Right. So if you, build, if you build a new permitted landfill today, you put a liner underneath it, you fill it up, and you put a liner on top of it. All of the historic, Hyde, I come from Hyde Park, Hyde Park's landfill is not lined underneath. Town of Washington landfill is not lined underneath. You know, most landfills are not lined underneath. The, the challenge is, most of the old landfills, and the challenge is to the design engineers and hydrogeologists is can you modify the landscape to drop the water table if they happen to be the kind of landfill that was used to fill a low spot? This is a pretty wet area. I mean, there's, there's water all around it. Yes. So. There's a reasonable chance, right? What we did for the town of, Lan of Milan is that we went on the uphill side and we dug a very deep ditch. And it allowed groundwater to flow out of the hillside and around the waste. And so we, in fact, converted what was lowland to a local Ireland. high. Um, that could be an option here, but it was costly there and it would be costly here. It's a, it's a, big, it's a big trench on the up gradient side. At the moment, this one is being ma managed only with a trench on the down gradient right. side as an attempt to draw it down on one side, but it's not being drawn down on both sides. Now, it was my understanding after speaking to the DEC um, mammal, the animal guy, that the beaver dams are affecting the road, but not necessarily the water into the landfill. Well, let's look at the pictures. I mean, I, 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 all I know is what you, one can see, because we haven't gone into the waste. I'm trying to open up his report on my phone. But I'm yeah. I mean, I have a copy of no, I, Steve Baricio's comments. If you have I, the other individual's comments, I haven't seen those. Oh, um, yeah, I do. Right but here. these are some of these. Uh, Bruce and I uh, traipsed around, and these are some of the pictures I took. Picture one is standing below at least one of the beaver dams, and I understand there may be more than one. That makes sense. They often, well, you know, they start at a low point, build a dam, and then when it rises up to a certain point, it spills over somewhere else. So then they go over there and they build that dam, and then they have to come up and build this one higher. So usually there is a, a series of them. Um, but in any case, here is, here is one of them. Um, and uh, from that point, taking a picture Picture two is looking back from that point towards the landfill. Um, a lot this of is POV in front of the um, dam looking the other way. This is the reverse. This is standing in the low spot looking up at the dam with the water. Is the second picture the reverse of the first picture? Good. Yes. yes. That's a fine way to think of it. Yep. That's exactly right. And then picture three and four are two shots of areas that are very near each other. And you know, clearly standing water is present at the toe of the slope of the landfill. Now, whether that water is just high enough that it's working its way back under the cap and, and saturating the first couple feet of garbage is exactly what Steve Pariseo is asking. <laughs> and there's actually only one way to answer that question. Um, but it, it involves penetrating the cap. Um, and if it has saturated one or two feet only of trash, then removing the beaver dam would lower the water table by the two to three feet that the dams have caused, and the trash can go back to being dry. If one were to find that the trash has actually, I mean, when you, when you stack up 20 to 30 vertical feet of garbage, it compresses everything that was underneath it. So if there was any sponginess to the soil types to it's any not there anymore it it's would be compressed i just have steve's um report in front of me and he says that removing the beaver dams um is unlikely, it is unlikely that trapping the beavers and removing the dam would totally eliminate the drainage problems it's true that's what he wrote the, the, the what he wrote and what I think he's willing to accept 
are different. And this, this comes from conversations that I've had with him since. I talked to Kevin Clark, not Steve. Okay. okay. Um, who contacted us just as a backstory and for the public after we motioned to buy beaver traps. He contacted us and said they wouldn't allow us to live trap beavers. That is correct. The there's, no, there's no legal place to release them. No, correct. There's and they no don't what? and there's they no legal place to release they them. They don't do well released. They're very territorial. If you live trap them and release them in any other area, it's it's not great. It's like and if you kill them, which they will allow us to get permits to kill them, um, other beavers will come in and take the place if the environment is conducive to beavers. It would require in it, his would, it would require implementing a management strategy that would include trapping as necessary and a certain amount of clearing as you go. Um, and, and those are your choices. I mean, I, unfortunately, those are, as, as best as I can tell, and I've spoken with Steve at length, and I've, and I've talked with our wetland and eco people at Chazen, um, there is a fairly straightforward way um, of trapping to kill uh, beavers. Well, Kevin Clark was not just to be, w yeah. what my conversation with him was, said he, it, it is allowed. He doesn't believe it will be effective in the long run. It would be a continuing maintenance issue. Um, now, you may have institutional memory here to help us out as to how frequently this has occurred. So if somebody says it will not prevent it forever, but if it only becomes a problem every five or six years and it's the way to address it, uh, that may be helpful. Now, you are absolutely right that what Steve Precio wrote is that he, he's not confident that trapping um, is going to solve all of his concerns. But in conversation with him, um, as recently as Friday, um, he said that he would accept, at least for a period of time, uh, putting the water level back where it was uh, and not sort of pushing the issue. Um, which leaves you with two choices. You know, one choice is to go back to sort of the essential question of where is the bottom of the garbage? And does any amount of manipulation of the water level there with or without beavers help sufficiently? Or can you calm the situation down by enacting a beaver management program, which will require repeat work on some interval that I can't specify on the other hand I will or is it just par for the course because there's no mem membrane between the garbage and the and the earth and there's groundwater that's exactly right that, I mean that's really the question and and uh, it as I see it and, and this is in some ways grows out of the conversation that Steve and I had is, is he said you know as far as he can tell, and based on what I'm seeing since, I'm agreeing, although I haven't looked through everything, um, the closure investigation report doesn't really tell us where the elevation of that intersection is between trash and native soil. Um, if it's several, if because of settlement, maybe there was peat there, the peat has now been compressed under 30 feet of garbage, it's now five or six feet into the water table, there's nothing you're going to do in that wetland that's going to lower the t water table five or six feet. Right. So, you know, worrying about the beaver one or two feet isn't going to matter. But if, but where that conversation goes is expensive. Um, whereas if, I, I, I can't speak for the DEC, but the conversation that I had with Steve is that um, if at least the water level was put back to where it was, uh, it would calm him down for a period of time. I've been using that facility uh, once a month when it's been open for a number of months now, uh, beginning of the spring. I haven't observed water there other than uh, very recently uh, uh, with uh, the beavers. So sounds to me we ought to go gradually try to get rid of the uh, beavers and see what happens before we uh, spend a lot of money uh, drilling. 
Does anybody have a longer institutional memory of that? I mean, I'll, I've, I've I'll been there for two years, and it's always been a lower water level. So. I'll, I'll check. I'll, I'll talk to some of the old timers and yeah. find out what they know. I, I think it quite realistically could become something that one has to do every couple of years. I don't know what that interval is. Um, what is the DEC saying that our responsibility is to lower the water table to what it was more recently before the beavers and then monitor? Do we need to? I, I, think, I, I think the DECs, see, what you have is you have different departments. You have Division of Solid Waste and Steve Parisio as the geologist for Region 3 in the in Solid Waste Department would like to know that the cap that was paid for by the town and the design that was approved by the state that includes a, a dewatering swale and a cap is functioning as best it possibly can. But I understand the top cap, but the bigger issue seems to me that we don't have a bottom membrane. So groundwater, which is a bigger issue yes. than rain, is always going to be a problem. Well, that's an unknown. Um, it's always going to be a problem if some of the waste is always below the water table. The design of the landfill was to have a fairly deep drainage trench on the down gradient side, which was intended. I'm not, I'm not there. I wasn't there. But I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, why would anybody do that? And this is comparable to what we've designed for other landfills, where we know that we, by, by lowering the water table by a couple feet, we can dry out the garbage, the feet of the garbage. We use a tactic like that. So I'm looking at this and I'm interpreting it the same way. Somebody was either doing it on the basis of knowledge or on the basis of a hunch. If they did it on the basis of knowledge, that would be nice. I don't see the data that suggests that. I think they did it on the basis of a hunch um, that lowering it was going to be helpful. It wasn't going to be helpful enough for them. Um, so at least putting it back to the point where the drainage is doing what it was supposed to do at the day it was designed and handed over to you as a finished closed landfill um, will, at least for the time being, put the solid waste department back in a point where they're saying, okay, you know, turn in your annual reports, document that it isn't necessarily getting sparkly clean, but it's not getting worse. Um, and I mean, I, I care about the environment. I, I'm encouraged by a couple things. We've been there for, four, for eight quarters, for two years, monitoring your landfill. I haven't seen iron-rich seeps you know, filtering off into the wetland. It, it, it looks pretty good uh, from a visual perspective. And it's also flowing right from anything that might seep out from under the landfill is passing right into a, a wetland. And I'm not saying you should do this to wetlands, but wetlands are absolutely fabulous in terms of their biodiversity. Filtration. For treating something like this. I mean, people use wetlands to treat wastewater. Let, um, let me tell you that I've got, I, this was one of the biggest call volumes I had on an issue. Yeah. You know, not budget, not job cuts. It was the beavers when after a couple of newspaper stories ran. I, I don't know. Well, um, a former town board member from New Paltz called me and referred me to <clears throat> some beaver wetland experts in the Adirondacks who use beavers to create wetlands to filter just such things. So. Absolutely. No, I mean, beavers have been as, as, as annoying as unplanned flooding can be uh, in terms of regional stream water quality, in terms of storm water retention, beavers are fabulous. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always the best activity in every location. And if in this particular location, not only does it have the potential to add to, in fact, add to contamination because garbage that was dry is now two vertical feet wetter than it was <laughs> because the water level's up, um, this may not be the best place for what is normally a good thing, is I guess, the, the question you have to, you have to evaluate. And I, I, don't, I don't think you can not answer this. Um, not answer the is issue? I don't think you can not respond to the DEC's observation report. I mean, I, I think that you've been asked to do a hydrologic investigation. Um, I've jotted down some estimates of where I think that takes you financially and where it exposes you. Um, and I've also jotted down some costs for what I think it might take to set up program to lower the water table by getting the beavers and the dams out of there. 
uh, and I can't make that decision for you. We probably need to contact some other engineering firms, right guys? Well, I mean, we talked about this from our procurement point of view um, because I'm, I'm in a rock and a hard place. I, I feel we're getting the best deal here, but I'm also the, the biggest proponent procurement. Of, of procurement. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you're trapped in the middle. Um, you go through a procurement program for me. You know, so I, you, you could yeah. take the position that I'm not, uh, I'm not the, 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 the standard guy. You, know, you, you put me over pretty good grilling before you hired me. So now I'm giving you advice. <laughs> Hired you to monitor the, to do the water testing there. And yes, and, and to write your annual report, which includes evaluating the significance of what comes up. Right, but for us, I mean, personally, for me to get on board with an estimated $25,000 monitoring project, I, I would want to yeah. do some more. Well, and if you wanted to go that route, I would certainly write you a closer proposal. You know, I gave you, I gave you, this isn't a proposal. This is ballpark. This is you're talking numbers like this. You're talking numbers like that. Well, let's assume we go for trying to get rid of the beavers, taking the least costly step first to see if it works. What are you going to do for fifty-three hundred dollars? You going to trap the beavers, or we got to hire somebody to trap it? Is this your this is the one estimate? This is the one that's this is the one that's closer to a proposal. And it, 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 this number is pretty tight. Um, what this does is it handles the communications. It handles the Army Corps and DEC permits, which means we, we have need to, to get the Army Corps of Engineers involved. Why? Because DEC wetlands are also Army Corps. We have to at least notify them. So mm -hmm. both, both agencies have to be contacted. The severity of the problem has to be described. They each have their own permitting <coughs> pathway to go through the process. Um, let's see, I, I, I thankfully I brought with me all of the backup that our wetland person wrote for me because I'm not gonna pretend to be a wetland person. I'm gonna tell you that I come from a company that has wonderfully diverse talent. Um, Chazen would visit the site and find evidence of the Beaver Dam, estimate location length and width using GPS aerial photography, uh, photograph the dam, document it, look for means of access to the dam, and evaluate options for removal. That would be in the ballpark of a thousand bucks. Chazen will develop and submit a permit application package to DEC and the Army Corps. Um, we understand, based on having looked at your town law, that we don't, uh, we believe that application to the town as a beaver dam removal can be covered by Article 24. So we've looked at your town law, figuring out whether we have to apply to you too. The application would include a cover letter describing the location of dam, impacts on the landfill, how the dam will be removed, any mitigation measures. There'll be a DEC joint, uh, Army Corps joint permit application form. There's a DEC beaver dam removal form. There would be a figure illustrating Beaver Dam in relationship to the landfill and DEC and photos. Um, fee for that would be about $3,000. So that takes us up to $4,000. The balance of that is for my time project managing and writing the communications to Region 3, who needs to be taken off your back. Kevin and, and Steve. Well, actually, Steve. And Kevin Clark is the wildlife guy. Uh, yeah. Correct. Well, actually, as the wildlife guy, he's going to see what my, my wetland person wrote. But Steve. Parisio, whose ultimate question is the one that's a little bit more scary, which is what's happening to the bottom of the ways. We're actually ducking him right now. We're not actually answering him his question. We're just putting it back the way it was and hoping that he calms down. So that's a little bit more detail on the scope of that $5,300 to answer your question. Does this include the person who's going to go out and get the beavers? No, no. I think I, didn't I write that in what's in front of you? My understanding is actually that you have somebody on staff who has a license to trap. Yeah, we do. Right. So that's an option. We also know somebody we can refer, but I thought you might prefer to use force account. Um, the, other, the other issue is that it doesn't include actually taking out the beaver dam. But once again, I was guessing that you might have force account. 
do that unless you wanted to use outside contractors and that's your choice. Um, because there is a permit that was issued for this, uh, the Army Corps and DEC would expect a firm like ours to observe and document how it was taken out, that it was taken out according to the permit conditions. So there is a cost here for daily observation so that then, a, then we can send communication into both agencies and design for the work of the So I think that, you know, my set, my, I was guessing that you would choose to use your force account for a lot of the actual work, but all of that can obviously be contracted if you so wish. So $5,300 for paperwork. Yes. We have our, our for a doctor's visit. We have our chair of the um, conservation advisory board here, uh, Jeff. Do you have any input or concerns or questions? Yeah. Could you address the? First, thing, thank you, Russell. Very honest uh, description of what's going on there, and uh, I was most taken by what you just said about ducking the question that the DEC has put forward to us. I mean, I would like to see us try to answer that question. Uh, do a hydrology study. Uh, there are also some historics we get from the old timers as to the condition of the landfill area as it was being filled. You know, I've heard little bits of stories that it was wet and they were driving into wet when they were dumping the garbage. Um, there's three wetlands, so it's a wetlands complex. Um, so. I think you know we're going to find out what we need to know if we do a hydrology study, and that would give us a long-term solution to this problem. Um, the beaver on, the, I guess, would be the north side, downstream side. I'm right. having trouble with my orientation so right now. The road goes through this way. The beaver over here. The wet, the landfills over here. Right. They raise the water here, and it impacts the road. Um, we also talked about closing the road and not using the site um, until we find out exactly what's going on there. Um, so I guess in, in the short, I would like to see us follow through on what the DEC really wants us to do, which is a hydrology study. Uh, we also have concerns about the release of that water once you take the dam down. Um, uh, Bruce and I walked, it gets lower and lower and lower behind the beaver dam. So we would need to know if we were going to go that route, which I don't personally recommend, uh, what would happen once we release You mean just water. tearing down the dams could have a quick release of water, which would... Well, impact other properties. And be a, be a large release of pollutants. Correct. Um, the other study, pollutants. thank you, what we would well, like... Well, if there's leaching into the water that's backed up, is that... Did you ever say that, or isn't well, that the is concern that there's a higher level of ammonia or? There is uh, from part of Steve's um, report. Mm -hmm. He gave us the downgrading MW95 uh, ammonia report. And then there he says, 15 years after installation of the landfill cap, there has been no improvement in groundwater quality and ammonia concentrations remain elevated well above the groundwater quality standard. Um, he goes on later to say that um, based on the hydraulic setting of the landfill, it is likely that this condition would exist to some degree, even without the recent beaver activity. So it all drives us to, we have to do the hydrology study to really understand what's going on here and that getting rid of the beaver, I know maybe six or eight years ago the beaver were there, they're going to come back, it's an ideal situation for them, it really doesn't solve our problems. So I would hope that the town would move forward on the hydrology study. On the $25,000 hydrology study? Well, I think it makes sense to Range. look at other, alter I mean, other uh, engineers. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that do this. Um, so we would go and get some other opinions, get some other bids. Um, you know, from what I've talked to with other hydrologists, it's not, there is science to it, but there's a lot of subjection to it. So you try to figure out from, I think the best scenario would be to get three or four people together. You pay one person to do it and get two or three others to, to look through the studies to make sure that we're moving forward correctly, <coughs> get the best heads together. So you're not advocating removing the beavers first. You're advocating doing, 
doing a hydrology study first. Correct. Our, our problem is not the beef. You said that. Um, it's obvious there's water there. There's been water there. There was water there before the garbage was put in the water. Um, the problem is the, the garbage that's in the water, not the beaver. So uh, we recommend do not uh, remove the beaver. And we still, there still is the question of whether or not that wetland is helping to filter at least what, what we know right now is there, which is the ammonia. And we haven't gotten an answer about whether or not that's helping. All, all good comments. Um, but that's not what I heard you say. Well, you know, it's your money. Um, you, you can no, go it's to taxpayers' you, money, not my money. Well, it's, uh, I, I, you're right. I've been in your seat. It's, it's your money to have to make hard decisions about. Um, I'll, I'll point out that this is groundwater. It is consistent as with, um, as Steve pointed out, um, this is not clean. I'll also point out that the the water quality has varied over time, which suggests that at times the landfill has performed beautifully. So I mean, perhaps this is an indication of the frequency with which it gets flooded. I can't comment on that. That's why it'd be worth doing some some research. But but if it if it met standards and then didn't meet standards for a while, and it met standards and then didn't meet standards for a while, is this the frequency with which the the wetland is being flooded. Uh, if that's the case, that would be good um, because it suggests that maybe as designed, it's, it can perform well um, un if managed ideally. Um, I completely agree that different hydrogeologists have different approaches. There's actually really only one right or wrong answer here. Uh, this isn't about opinions. This is about where is the water level relative to the bottom of the garbage? I, I can't model that. No other hydrogeologist can model it. Somebody's going to have to go find it. And if you put six holes through the garbage, <coughs> you could miss an acre that happens to have a depression in an eight-acre landfill. Um, How many acres is the landfill? Eight and change is what Steve said, right? You could put a whole heck of a lot of holes in this thing and miss one or two low spots that happen to be pre-waste little pocket ponds. Uh, and you could spend a whole lot of money on a hydrologic investigation and actually not answer your question. And it would have nothing to do with whether it was me as a hydrogeologist or one of my competitors as a hydrogeologist. It would be a lack of knowledge or lack of fortitude to put in. Just lack of luck. 100 holes, right? I mean, yeah. I, I'll tell you, we've done, we've done in contaminant investigations where you put in 12 test pits, and after something happens, it was in the 13th location that there was a buried tank. It, 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 it's the unknown. Um, so I'm sympathetic with the, I'm very sympathetic with the, the pure desire to have a site that has no whether you have the fortitude with or without our company to answer this question right now, I don't. I can't answer for you. That's where I say it is your choice. Um, I can tell you that as uncomfortable as a chart like this could make you, the converse is that it, it also shows you that at times this landfill can do well. In 2002, it was. 2002 was a drought. It was on the money. Yeah. Sorry? It was, there was a drought year and it was, there was no. Yeah, I bet the landfill was, or I bet the, the wetland was just about dry all summer because 2001, 01 and 02 was one of our recent droughts. So water level dropped. No waste was probably in contact with the water table. Groundwater cleaned right up. Whether that condition can be returned to under normal precipitation periods, I don't know the answer to. Um, well, we're getting weather. Yeah. Well, no. Well, it's interesting. Climate change is interesting, isn't it? We're getting wetter, and sometimes we have long periods, just like the last three or four weeks. It was really dry. Look at rain a little bit. Um, I. It really is a philosophical question that you have to answer, and then you have to think about who you want to hire. But the philosophical question is: Do you want to chase this to ground, to where it very well could take you, which would be a redesign of the landfill 
<coughs> you mean a redesign of the whole eight acre landfill? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, could, end, you could very easily find, I mean, say, say, uh, under the, say under this landfill, you find a quarter acre or a half acre that had a pre-landfill sort of little pond, and there's garbage in it. Well, you can't lower the water table in just one quarter of it. You're going to have to find a way to lower the water table under the entire landfill it, to drop the water level below that one acre problem area. What do you to take all, remove all the garbage? I mean, what? No, I, I is mean, it a, become I mean, a Superfund area? I mean, that well, you know, wouldn't the something is this like wouldn't even qualifies for Superfund because although, I mean, let's talk about ammonia for a moment. Ammonia is is added to agricultural fields as a, as a, as as a, a, as a fertilizer. A, right. I mean, we're not talking about TCE or petroleum or, or bad, you know, I'm not saying about this, um, but relatively speaking, this is a solid waste facility that has, that has decomposition has and iron, manganese, um, ammonia, you know, nothing that is going to make you eligible for Superfund money, God forbid. So this is all on us. And right now the state, matching fund program is pretty well out. You mean it's gone? Yeah, I, I think that there's a line for some of the remaining puddles, but it's, it, there's not much left. I mean, I, I think the Duchess yeah, County, yes, Duchess County Baleful had to wait several years before they got their matching funds. And that was only because they got a consent order signed saying, you know, you, you go up the pecking order if you have a consent order saying this is a real problem. Um, so we'd have to go to the DEC, turn ourselves in, make sure that we've got a consent order documenting a very serious problem so that then you could be eligible for 50 or 60 percent matching money. Talk to you. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but see, we talked about that um, when I put that question to Steve, you know, whether this was a wetland reclamation or a landfill reclamation, you know, a wetland restoration yeah. or a landfill reclamation, and he said that he was going to look in to see where the pots of money are. Uh, you know, a, a, a wetland restoration or a landfill no, remediate reclamation. reclamation or I, I could be getting the terms mixed up, but it's either you know whether re we're cleaning up trash or restoring a wetland. Correct. You Correct. mean there could be money for one and not the other, or little bits from both. And when we left that site visit, he was going to look into it and see what was out there. He did say this was on his radar as one of the problem landfills you know I think he's monitoring some 60 he's where monitoring he's in, all the landfills in region 3 how big yeah. is region where is your area 3 how big is it it's uh, I don't know is it to New Paltz or County. oh yes it's definitely New Paltz yeah. yeah and that he was very happy that we reached out he sees us as a cooperative effort you know he's not looking to you know, come down on us um, but he made it pretty clear to me that he would like us to move forward on trying to fix this once and for all, at least. How did the problem. DEC get? How did they? How did? They, how did this come to their attention? Uh, well, um, I I asked Jeff to look into the beaver problem. Right. And it was then, the it was the rain for the big uh, where the road got washed out and the highway department did the emergency fix. It was before that. Yeah, we we knew we had had a problem on farther south. And the highway had been coming in every couple of weeks or so. Farther south, farther towards Stone. To towards the, the landfill itself. Okay, Stone Church. The being pile. And they, they'd been coming in every couple of weeks and, and removing the dam, using a, a backhoe or something to remove the dams. And the water level would drop down, and then the beaver eventually moved. And they moved down into the woods, and they built their there are two dams or three dams, whatever they have in there now, and they, they outsmarted us. We can't get a backhoe in there. So, um, you know, we, we're, we're now in a different situation. And Bobby had been going in with uh, hip boots on and taking it down eight inches every couple of days because that's all we could take down with the aerodrome there. And the beaver would come back and build it all up again. And, what uh, do you mean taking taking the dam down eight yeah, inches? Why is that? Uh, what do you mean? Because t taking it down further would release more water and flood yeah. out the air. Okay. Right. You'd want to take down eight inches every day for a couple of days so that the, the discharge would be controlled. And then you know the typical guidance is don't just take down a little key area because it's 
the beavers can fix that pretty quickly, but you know, take it out all the way, you know, shoulder to shoulder of their dam, and then take the beavers out of there so that the like ones with the institutional memory are, are gone, and then you win yourself at least some years before you fight it again. But Bruce, if I understood you, you're saying the beavers move closer to the uh, pile of uh, <coughs> garbage? No, they moved away from it. They moved away from the road. Yeah, no, they, no, no, no. The, the pile of old garbage is, as you drive in, I'm, I'm assuming we're heading south from Stone Church Road. All right, and on to the west side of the, of the heap was where they were damming up. They since have moved north towards the, the rec park, towards Stone Church Road. And um, the water flows north there for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a wetland on the other side of Stone Church. But um, that's where they went. Okay, so you're saying the beaver moved further away from the pile. Right, right. So now there's more water, more surface area to back up. Is what they've, they've got a pond now where it was just high streams before. What do you think, Bruce? What's your recommend? I mean, I think we've got to really think about it and talk about it. I, I, I don't think we can decide anything tonight. Well, Jeff had, um, had said that Cornell or somebody else had people that could help with this. Yeah, I think, um, you know, once we get more information, we can get the historicals, you know, find out about the capping. Um, I can bring a whole package up to Cornell University and hammer them to give us some assistance. You know, they have a much wider you know, view of things. That's why they're there. They've offered assistance. So at least I think we could get something out of them on which direction to go. I'll also send you the information of these um, beaver wetland and wildlife people. Right. It may, they may be worth, I don't know, if you you know they may be worth talking to. Yeah. That was forwarded to me by a former town board member in New Paltz, who called after reading the newspaper story they'd gone through a similar <coughs> ordeal in New Paltz. Beavers, <laughs> wetland, runoff, filtration. Pro probably the other thing we need to do is we need to go down to the highway garage and crawl through the archives and see if there's anything from way back with the when landfill. When it was started? Yeah. Do we have to look in the records first and find out when, would there have been a resolution starting the landfill or just? Uh, probably, but who knows? All right. Uh, um, <coughs> all right, Russell, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. We'll let you know what's what's where we go with this. Thanks, Jeff. I didn't know these were cartoons. I would have called them drawings. But. Drawings, yeah. in the true Renaissance sense of the word. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, I, John, I can't remember whether we passed the the budget or not for no. Vandenberg Cove. You have to vote on that. All right, may I have a motion to adopt the 2013 Vandenberg Cove Sewer District budget. A motion. Second, I'll make it. All those in favor? Aye. All right, we're done. Aye. Now, uh, resolution scheduling a special board meeting to discuss year-end accounting matters, tab eight. I don't know what this is. Well, we need a end-of-year meeting to sign off on vouchers and I think um, probably um, vote on our coverage for town um, general liability and uh, elected officials insurance when when's when's our next meeting this year or this month we don't have any more oh that's why we're doing this yeah. one. yeah 28th uh, doesn't uh, 28th was proposed uh, I think three of us aren't available Joe's out so it's you Tom Gina and I Joe's out for surgery I think the 20th or 21st uh, is something that was floated. Uh, I checked with Shelley to make sure. Um, she thinks those dates would be okay. They would be fine for her, and I checked with Gina. The 28th doesn't work for Gina. It potentially doesn't work for me. Um, 20th and 21st were suggested. I'm okay with either one. 
So as long as we need a quorum. So if you can do 20 or 21st, you want to do, tw uh, tw what's 20? Thursday, I think. We do a Thursday meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, better than a Friday. Check that. I'm checking, hold on. Yeah, Thursday the 20th. What time? Seven? Oh, 6.36. Want to do six? Oh, there's a court facility use here. We don't have to be in this room. No, we can go downstairs. Um, we got to keep the agenda, though, to this. It's for the vouchers and insurance. But, but. Let's not um, add a whole lot of other things. Let's just the let's just keep. Cemetery committee wants to make a presentation. Let's wait until the new year the, for them. Yeah, let's. I thought they were coming tonight. They they're canceling. They they didn't want to present if Tom wasn't here because he's their liaison. Well, he may Why not don't you be. Then hold it till I come back. Let's hold it till the new year. I don't think they want to wait that long. Well, this is a voucher I'm here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah, you. This is a voucher and an insurance meeting. I think it's an end of year wrap up financial meeting. Is that your understanding, Bruce? Yeah, I'm just suggesting we do that rather than turn it into a no. I, I, I an think an expandable it's a, meeting. Yes, I agree. All right, so so it's insurance and vouch and bookkeeping. So we'll make it six thirty. I, I can't make six on that night. I know that. That's fine. Six thirty. 6.30 on Thursday the 20th. Motion. Uh, mo a, a motion. Second. All those in favor? Come on, Joe. Aye. I think you should be. <laughs> Aye. We need uh, three. Oh, okay. Thank you. 6.30 Thursday. Uh, and when you special notice it, John, make sure that it's just these items. Accounting and insurance. The, it, it's a potential presentation from Fraley and Raycow too, um, that which is the insurance. Um, and we just have to make sure that we have a quorum before we notice it. So would you contact Gina and Tom to make sure one of them can do it? Look, I'll give you my thoughts on insurance. I think we ought to go with the least expensive car carrier that's decently rated by uh, AM Best. And uh, uh, I would go with the uh, lower deductible. The lower umbrella? Um, lower well, umbrella. Um, Greg Raycow has asked to speak to us about that, um, to give his point of view. Um, and we've gotten another point of view and an overview of what other towns, municipalities, and uh, the Dutchess County carries. We seem to have a lot, 15 for the first incident, 30 ag million aggregate for the year. Uh, if we lower it, we can lower our costs substantially. I think it's very high, the expense is very high for that extra coverage. Okay, I, I, well, I think it's it'll, the board will, the board. It's unduly high for a uh, uh, mm -hmm. top umbrella. Yeah. Well, we'll Get all the information and it's just something we have to vote on before the end of the year yeah. so we're covered for the I, first that's why i just wanted to give you my thoughts on it because i won't be here so you're going for lower umbrella limits and the less unless expensive. you can get that higher for a much cheaper price okay yeah. mm, that makes sense so. yeah that's seven or eight thousand dollars more it was like yeah. Yeah, fourteen thousand dollars more yeah all right, let's move on. Item eight, resolution approving Columbia Green contract. Uh, tab nine, motion. Motion. Second. Does anybody know what this is? You can make a motion, you want to second it? I'll second it, okay. No, I don't. It's Gina's. It's Gina's. So let's table it till next time? Uh, we have to let them know no later than January 1st, 2013. So table it until our reorg meeting. Or so when? 20th. January what? January 1st. So the only other meeting you'll have is the one you so the, have a limited so agenda on. It seems so to the me agenda grows. The next meeting. I don't think this is going to take you much time. 
So why don't we prove it? Approve it um, in concept. <laughs> I don't know what else to do with the okay. damn thing. I don't know what to do. Why do we Nobody do? else knows what to do with <laughs> no it. Why don't you put it on the agenda for your next uh, meeting? It's going to be before January 1st. The Presumably, <laughs> Gene will be here and explain it. Yeah, the, Easy it's for you to say you're not coming to the meeting, right? The, the problem with this one is we haven't read it, right? Well, we don't know what it is. No one's brought well, it we know what We know what the contract yeah. is, but it's, it's the services for the the um, we, where we, they take the dogs right and and it was discussed in brief um, I think we need to read it I think someone needs to bring us through through it you know someone ha yeah, who but who? follows us well Gina oh. <laughs> Gina so what happens if Gina isn't here on the twentieth and we're without a dog contract I guess well you can approve it at that point. <coughs> All right, fine. Ex let's expand <laughs> the accounting, insurance, and, and dog, dog contract. But that's it. Yeah. All right, hold over. <laughs> All right, uh, what's this one? Resolution setting Monday, January 14th, 2013, at 6 45 p.m. for the annual reorganizational board meeting. Yay. Motion. Motion. Second, please. Second. Will you be back by then? I hope so, but I don't know. He's making it a goal. Discussion. Scooter. Any discussion on it? Uh, um, I'd like to see a list of everything that we need to discuss beforehand. I guess we're, it's committee reappointments, board reappointments. All your meeting um, dates. All of our meeting dates. Will you will you come up with a proposed list of, of meeting dates and make sure That's that they're a resolution for them. and make sure that they're. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, okay, That's excellent. Oh, good. Good. So that you'll vet them and make sure that we're not putting meetings on holidays and things like that. Excellent. What else do we need to discuss in the meeting? What professional services we're bidding out? Committees. Anything we have to else? pick pick banks. We have to pick newspapers. We have to swap pick swap our committee liaison positions. Yep, do all kinds Hard of wonderful swapping. things. Okay. Uh, John, usually what they what Barb used to do was take the ones from the years before and just kind of copy, and then the supervisors would change them, and then we'd all get involved and do our little arguing. Um, but if if you start with the what we did previous years, then you've Talking got all about the liaison positions. No, just the format of all the different things that we have to cover. Now, oh, again, on some stuff, we just pass through it and save it for another meeting. We don't right. always resolve everything. All right, so we had a motion, we had a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. All right. Um, okay, number 10, resolution approving service contract with Bell Copiers. Is this the assessors? Tab 11. The assessor's office. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Second. Any other discussion? How old is this copier? And is this. You know what? I don't have a discussion. I don't think this is on our tech agenda. Um, so, I, in terms of a foreign <coughs> one or anything like that, I. You guys? I, you know, at some point we're going to have to look at whether having a central print room makes more sense than having all these little copiers around. Um, or two print, you know, one for ups. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we have at least three, three or four copiers. That are Could the building zoning <coughs> and assessor's office share and, you know, whatever we turn the downstairs underneath the stairway into a 
office for the CAB or another board, can they share a printer? I agree. But are we going to get it done? You know, we need this now. Yeah, we need it week. now. Yeah. We didn't go through procurement with it either, right? Well, it's $650. That's still, that's two quotes at least. I think these are the people probably who have done it previous year, so for $650, I don't think I would stand on ceremony. No, I think it's something we have to look at, though, and we will with the efficient, you know, with the new configuration. John, do you know if they got prices on this at all? I don't. I think it's a renewal. Shelly might know. It's Liz. Clerk in um, law uh, court. Court clerk. All right, um, let me run down and ask Shelly if she's there. Hang on. <coughs> Talk amongst yourself. Sorry, Fred. The, um, the copier, according to Shelly, was the town clerk's old one. We've been paying a service contract on that since at least 2008. So it was one that wasn't acceptable up here anymore. And so we moved it down to the assessor's office. She also said that we don't go out to normally go out for procurement on service contracts that we buy equipment from, places where we buy equipment, um, which to me doesn't make any sense. So um, after the you know after the the first warranty period. So um, I don't care. What do you want to do? I want to approve it and approve and it. moving forward. Well, if I abstain or say no, it doesn't. You don't have a quorum. <laughs> no. Oh, this passes. is fun. No. What do you think? Oh, it passes? Yeah. No, huh? I thought you need. Oh. Of those present. Yeah, you need three people. Maybe I'll. No, you need three. You need a majority of them. You but. abstain. I'll vote no. <laughs> It'll just be Joe. <laughs> John, do we need? Do we need to, be to pass something, or is it just to have a meeting? My understanding was once you have a quorum, you need a majority of those present. That's not my understanding. No? Okay. I'm with John. I know you are. <laughs> Lawyers <coughs> stick together. Oh, there goes more money. Let's check. <laughs> okay, I'll vote yes. Let's go. All right, resolution approving amendment to contra uh, contract with Weston and Sanson, tab 12. I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, what this is is the all of the planning board meetings and everything that have been going on if we're not in the original scope. And then there's some um, out of scope work on the um, field house that was not in the plan at the time that, that this was bid. And this is coming out of the uh, Parkland Fund money, the Rhinestein property? No, doesn't this come from the money that was raised by the Thompson Mazzarella group? Uh, the, the no, this, this would come out of those funds that we can spend that on. Right now it would be the Rhinestein Capital Fund. Right. What I just said. You know, you, you said Parkland. Parkland. Rhineson Property Capital Fund. Okay. Okay. So I have a motion. We have a second. Yeah. Now I'm assuming, Bruce, the committee has approved this. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm not looking at this stuff. I give everything to them. They have right. to bring recommendations forward. So. Um, all right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Passed. Uh, appointment to the Ethics Committee. We want to table well, I, that? Yeah. I think let's table. Okay. Uh, that's that held over. 
important to our to our no May. no to uh, January to, to our new year yeah. meeting yeah. Uh, appointment to open space affordable housing committee tab 14 I met with the uh, candidate for a chat and I was certainly satisfied uh, the uh, committee recommends her so Great. and she is a gardens resident uh, yes Okay, so we do we have a motion on that? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, reappointment to the planning board. Is this Michael? Signing up again. Um, Michael Trimble is asking for reappointment to the chair of the planning board. Another seven-year term. Is it seven years? No, this this is the chair. This is not the um, the membership on the board. The, what the reason is because the planning board meets before we yeah, have a reorganizational right. meeting. Oh, so they, so they have to reappoint a chair in December. Okay. Um, so do we have a motion? Motion. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. And with a thank you. Okay. Um, 15 resolution authorizing an intermissional agreement between the town of Rhinebeck and the village of Rhinebeck. Um, tab 16, the last update from the town attorney came in around 5 o'clock today. Joe was working with her at 4 something. I had worked with her before. Uh, we've been work Joe and I have been working on this. Joe's done an awful lot of work on it. Thank you, Joe. Um, and I've shipped the one that we got over to the village because they have a meeting tomorrow night. Oh, the new one. Yeah, the, the latest one that came in. At 5 o'clock. Well, 5.15, whatever it was. The last one that came in. And um, so let's see. Did, uh, did we have a motion and all that stuff? No, motion. No. I'll make the motion. Second it. All right. Any other discussion on this? No, and this is the grant authority for Tom to sign in substantially the same form. I haven't read the newest uh, iteration of this. I've been following all the other ones. I haven't read anything. It's really, really, really close. Okay. It's, it's okay. Really close. Really close. Okay, then. Aye. Aye. You guys are recommending this. Yes. Okay. Say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, discussion of possible action. Um, liaison reports. Elizabeth, got anything? Well, we got the tech. Uh, only took <coughs> a couple of months. Tech is uh, teching ahead. Um, well, what does that mean? We sent out an RFP and we're waiting for responses? RFP is now available in Town Hall, as we said in the beginning. This of is the, the responses or the request? The request okay. has is available. We're seeking vendors to bid on this, and uh, the timeline is on the web. and. Um, hoping in January we can start buying and implementing things. Um, I don't think I have anything from any other um, departments except that there is a big uh, traffic law codification coming up that's going to need some cooperation with, I guess, the highway department, the clerk's office, and maybe even the police. We're looking to uh, incorporate all past traffic laws and um, how do how do I how do I say that we're going to revoke all of them and have one new all-encompassing traffic law dated 2013 but we need to do some mapping with color pencils we have a, a, a big um, multi-page recommendation from um, general, code. general code as to how to go about this so the clerk and the highway superintendent will work together to bring all these laws onto one new page. Why are we doing this? Who, how did this start? Uh, general code suggested that we needed to clean it up. It's, there's too many. Uh, this is the book publisher who will get a fee from uh, republishing the thing, or is that what? Yes, and it's also, we have a oh, man, The one is shaking his head and the other is saying it's fine, so. Right now, there's no real codification of the town's vehicle and traffic law. They're scattered amongst various local laws uh, and ordinances going back 
to the as 30s, much as, 40s? Well, at least 50 years, to my knowledge. So it's not in our code book? No, and in fact, if you go online to the general code site to chapter 113, which is the vehicle Blank. and traffic laws, and you click on it, you don't get anything. There's nothing. There's nothing there. It's something that we've been meaning to do for many years and we need to do. There, there's a problem with that because there's, there's different codes that were there before and somebody removed moved them at one time. And there's no board action associated with those. I can think of a few other ones. And I don't know whether that's the general code or whatever. It's a vendor, right? I'm not sure that they would have had anything to do with that. They, well, they've been asking us, apparently they've been asking us for some time. For 10, 11 years for well, information. For a, a compilation of our traffic laws. But they're a vendor, right? Yes. Okay. Have we talked to the judges about this? Because presumably they're working with these laws. I haven't and spoken. Maybe they have a compilation that they this, use, or they just. I haven't. I haven't spoken to any. Make it up. I haven't spoken to any any the judges. I haven't spoken to the justices, but I do know that the highway superintendent is very much in favor of it, and I have it from her that the police are also interested in it. I kind of think we ought to talk to the judges because we're finding people and uh, enforcing these laws. So they must have something. Highway. Well, the laws are there. They're just scattered. Well, they're but not, maybe they have a compilation. You know, maybe it's they have a compilation that we can just send to the code uh, people. Right? Who knows what they have, but... I, would, I think that the thing to do is to ask the highway superintendent to look into what general code is asking us and see if it's a big deal or not. Something that can be accomplished within the highway department with input from the police department. They're asking for color-coded maps and such. Okay, well, it's a liaison report. Yeah, well, so yes. We're not spending any money. So. Well, thank yeah, you. It, 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 to me, it's kind of weird asking the highway superintendent. Well, who at, else would? The judges. Presumably, they're the people who are enforcing these laws that the, the, this code book is asking us to compile. So that's the first place I would go, not to a highway superintendent who has no function about enforcing vehicle and traffic laws. Okay, uh, Highway, Tech, Web, Rhinecliff, nothing, um, CAB, uh, Water, Beavers, Property. I think I have no more liaison to report. I just oh, the zoning review, the zoning review committee uh, meeting again next week, and that is moving along nicely. Uh, we're gathering all the little things that we need to look at and maybe bring before the town board. Right. Thank you. Joe? Uh, with respect to planning and zoning, we have gotten the RFP responses. We have two bids. Uh, copies uh, were sent to uh, the building department, the zoning uh, department, and... Uh, the liaisons. The, what? The liaisons. No, uh, not the liaison, to the building inspector. The oh, there was one in the office, though, that I saw. There's one yeah. for the town board. Yeah. Okay. We sent one to the building inspector, okay. one to, I believe, Michael Trimble, John, am I right? And one to Ed Maddock. These are the people who are most intimately involved. There has to be discussion. Bruce, you probably ought to look at it. Elizabeth, there, there's I one there. And somebody, uh, hopefully Gina, will take uh, uh, control of this and coordinate uh, uh, this. There's certainly a huge disparity in uh, pricing. Uh, the pricing. And uh, uh, what we have to see is whether the low bidder is giving us uh, what the product we want or they want. OK. Anything else? Uh, with respect to uh, affordable housing, um, 
what we're working on is a compilation of, uh, not a compilation, but a uh, affordable housing uh, provision to be put into the zoning law. What's there now is just a placeholder. Uh, tonight I will send out a draft to the committee for them to chew on for the next month or so. Uh, so sometime in the next uh, uh, <coughs> two, three, four months we'll have a proposed uh, local law to present. Great. Good. That's it? That's it. Okay. Bruce? Oh boy, what have I got? Um, let's see, we had a rec meeting the other night, uh, last week, I believe it was, and the subject of a sports association came up, and this is something we'd talked about for years, and now there's interest in. What it is, is an association of, of little league, soccer, uh, lacrosse, swim team, the, the different sports organizations that are in town, they would get together and work out how they do fundraising so they aren't all hitting the Stepping same person. Um, work, you know, uh, labor parties, work parties, things like that, coordinate that, coordinate use of fields, uh, keep their schedules posted where everybody could see what's going on. And they also brought up um, the potential of the concession stand uh, generating money through running the concession stand. And they didn't necessarily mean the concession stand at the pool, but but that's a concept that we need to pursue since we struggle with that every year. Um, I'm sorry, this would be an association of independent clubs that would right, right. report to the rec committee or well, the they, town board? Or we liaise with them. We don't actually report. Um, and uh, let's see, the 2013 schedule is still in flux. We're not quite done with that yet. Uh, Joe Kupiak started working on the ice skating rink. <coughs> We're so, going to get cold weather this year? We don't know. This is, this is either three strikes you're out or three strikes or three times Lucky. is the charm. Right. So we don't know, but we're, we're going to go with that again. Um, as far as the waterfront goes, they're finishing up their kayak storage plans to bring a proposal to the board. <coughs> and the feasibility study, the DC feasibility study, so that'll, that'll be coming in January. Excuse me. Uh, buildings and grounds. The heating system in here is falling, ap falling apart, um, and so they have, they replaced some of the zone valves over the last couple of weeks. There's now steam valves that are letting go, and and the problem is the system's so old that it's it's hard to find some of the parts. So they're struggling through that right now. <coughs> Hopefully, it won't. Uh, take us too long to get everything working again, but it, it is an ongoing problem right now. We talked about the landfill, uh, the tiles in the shower can st still going on. Uh, we talked about the bidding for the dock and dock installation and removal, that kind of thing. As far as um, the park goes, the Thompson Mazzarella Park, Sally's son Frank is, a, is an architect, so he's collaborating with Bob Wills on the, the field house design now. <coughs> and he's come up with some really neat stuff. I think you're going to see it Wednesday night, your, your crew. Uh, we've had various meetings with, with um, the CAB and with the soccer club and, and a few other groups. The IMA we talked about. <coughs> um, we took a field trip to uh, New York State Parks to see their permeable pavement. And we had, it was kind of mixed reviews. And it's permeable pavement. It's where the, the water goes right through it. Is it is it actual cement or is it it's, intermittent blocks with soil and grass? They have or? both. They have the um, the pavers with space in between, and then they have the concrete with with like air right. through it. Um, there's some loading concerns <laughs> about about that. Well, I don't want to go into that. that that'll now. come later. Yeah, I don't want to go into that now. Um, as far as the town board goes, I've been talking to the COO at RDA because um, I, I called up to find out if we had. You're the, talking about the uh, software for accounting. Well, it's it, yeah, it's a financial system, but it, it does a lot more than that. And I called them up to find out if we had the uh, online uh, purchase order policy or, or module. 
And uh, so that way, the, the reason I like that was because if you fill out a purchase order, if there's money... It's encumbered. It, it's encumbered automatically, and, and your financial records get updated right away. And the same thing when you close it. There's, there's a whole bunch of good things with it. Nice. Um, and come to find out, we have it. We've had it for years. Um, and we just never turned it on. So that's why I've been working with Jeffries or, you know, sending him nasty grams. Um, I've not been too nasty. Well, okay, I've been sending him love notes. I don't know. Um, the, also, they're sending us what we have installed, our entire inventory of what we have from RDA, because there's a lot of modules. So they're sending us what we have and what we could have, or yeah, what we could yeah, have? Yeah. Oh, great. They're sending us the cost for everything, what we paid and what we would have to pay to acquire, how, what the training is and how much the training would cost. Great. So uh, they were going to have that for us today, but at 5.30 the COO says something doesn't make sense. You have to wait till tomorrow morning. So I don't know. For our rework meeting. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that I've been doing is I've been looking for sweet spots uh, for the shared services, looking at places where we're either really efficient or really expensive compared to the village, the towns, other towns, the state, that kind of stuff. Just to, to kind of find out where things are. I was hoping Joel would be here tonight so we could ask him questions about The, the next meeting that, that, usually but, comes to, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, capital plan. I just wanted to put it. On, on the rec, are, are you going to re-examine fees also? Uh, yeah. We did. Okay. Um, very mundane. <coughs> the uh, timer uh, doesn't work in the men's room, and uh, I guess the lights were on all Friday night, which drove me crazy. You mean this one down here? Yeah. That's because somebody hit the switch. Uh, this is Okay, I don't know why, but it was on. There's a switch, and it, they took the tape off, and they moved the switch. Terrific. And we probably need a timer in the ladies' room, too, because the okay. is off and on uh, all night. So, John, I guess we have to get resolutions for... Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we come back to the capital plan in the new year. You know, and an inordinate amount of work went into uh, recording everything and getting to the point where we are, and we shouldn't keep kicking the can. We've got to deal with all the highway uh, requests. Um, so I guess that's something in our reorg meeting we could schedule. Um, to I'm committed to keep working on it, and I, I'm assuming you guys are too, and I'd like to right, I think get it should, done. Right, I think we should, but I think we probably ought to set things for February. I'd like to be Yes, I, I'm of, saying uh, like in the reorg meeting, we could maybe schedule some dates and have three or four dates and, and get through it. it there's, there's another facet to the capital plans that always seems to escape us when we have these discussions. And that's how do you maintain the capital that you have? What, what, you know, like we have roads and they have a crack in them. Do we tar the crack and the road lasts an additional year because of that, as an example? What's the maintenance schedule for the mowers? Stuff like, we should have that too besides More detailed just, information other than the inventory and the replacement. Yeah, it's how do we get the most out of the capital that we have? Mm -hmm. Or, or we're planning on buying, what's the life cycle for it? Let's get through the first stage first. Well, I, th I think the two of them go hand in hand. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why it always escapes us. Mm. Okay, uh, any comments from the public? Cross River Fine Art and Betsy Jackaruso for loaning us the artwork that's up in the town hall. This will be here for six or eight weeks and then she wants to swap it out with more work. So thank you very much. Is Are this all her work? No, this is her students. I think there's about 16 artists here. <clears throat> uh, can we open it up to other artists or, or yeah. are we only? Of course. Anybody who would like to bring, you know, just bring it to my attention or Bruce's, and then we vet it and figure it out whether it fits and how to do it, and love to put more work up. It can't be dangerous, can't have a price on it, and can't be controversial. Correct. <laughs> that, that's basically what we figured out a couple years ago when we started this. I'm 
sorry, what did you say? What it can't be dangerous because of the court. Right. Can't be have a price on it because you can't sell in here. Right. And it can't be controversial because this is a public place and we don't want to have controversy other than what we bring to the table. We've got enough. Those light switches. Okay. Um, we have a couple of personnel matters and a possible litigation that we need to discuss in executive session. I so move we go into executive session. Second, and I believe we will be coming out with a resolution, or there's a possibility of coming out with a resolution. Right. Thank you. So, Fred, you got to hang for a couple minutes. Um, but okay, let's uh, have a motion to come back out of executive session. Motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I don't look over his shoulder. I don't know. I, I don't understand. Loves to proofread. Bye. Uh, no, I'm not sure it is fine. Um, this is always my policy. There's not anything new. Right. Okay. Let's just make that clear. Early in our existing policy. Okay. Um, all right. We have the uh, request by our deputy town clerk to uh, roll over some of her unused vacation that she wasn't able to take during the transition to our new town clerk. And um, the motion is to allow her to roll that over for up to six months in 2013. Should we say uh, the end of June? Okay, the end of June up to six months, whatever. Yeah, yeah. okay. June up to six months, the 30th, end of June. Yeah. Um, so that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You passed? Okay. All right. Uh, we have another one. Um, this is a resolution regarding medical benefits for part-time employees who have retired. Uh, it has always been our policy that we do not provide uh, medical insurance for part-time employees once they retire. And uh, it has come to our attention that one or more part-time employees have been getting medical insurance paid for by the town since they retired, and therefore we want to terminate uh, that benefit, which is contrary to our policy. So the motion is, whereas one or more part-time employees have um, received health insurance benefits through the town after they retired, now therefore be it resolved that effective January 1st, 2013, such benefits shall be terminated. So that's the motion. I made it. Is there a second? There's a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any other business before the board? No. Motion to adjourn? Motion to Second. adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.